Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're starting a new series on what is space made of? And that became a very important question when Newton discovered the equation of gravity and there was this force at a distance concept and then with the additional knowledge and understanding of electricity and magnetism and Maxwell's equations where again we had the Coulomb forces which appeared to be forces at a distance we wondered how does that happen? How come over space a force exists that acts on some object that's far away through space? Does space have a property? Is space made of something? Well, in 1920, Einstein made a speech at the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. And he made some interesting statements. He locked onto the concept of there being some substance it in space, or that space is made of some substance. They didn't know what it was. They called it ether. And so he kind of locked onto that. And remember, 1920 was just one year after he proved that light actually travels a bent path around objects that have a massive amount of mass, like a star or a galaxy. We could see light being bent through space. Light doesn't travel in a straight line near a large mass. Light is affected by gravity. And again, how can that happen? Because light doesn't have any mass. So something is very interesting and strange about space that needs to explain these phenomena. So in 1920, when he made his speech, he made some very important statements. So let's take a look at some of these statements. First of all, he said, number one, according to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical quantities. So space has some properties, some qualities about it that make it different from being a complete vacuum. Something affects the force of gravity, something affects the forces between electricity and magnetism, between charges, and so he says that it's space itself that allows that to happen. So it has some sort of physical quantities. And then he made the statement saying, therefore, there exists an ether. So he says an ether must exist because space has physical quantities, physical properties, and therefore there must be an ether. Then he goes on to say, according to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. He doesn't leave a lot of room for doubt. He says there must be an ether. It cannot be any other way. Why? Because the general theory of relativity, which of course he devised, which showed that light changes direction under the influence of gravity. So therefore, there must be an ether. It cannot be another, any other way. On top of that, he made an additional statement that said, for in such space, there would be no propagation of light. He said, if space didn't have ether, if it wasn't made of ether, whatever it is, you could not have the propagation of light. He was a firm believer that you could not have electromagnetic waves moving through a vacuum of space if space was made of absolutely nothing. Because what we know is when we have waves on a string, you have to have something, a material there, the string to allow the wave to travel. Sound waves need air to travel. Ocean waves need water to travel. Any wave that we can see has a medium through which it travels. Therefore, he doesn't believe that electricity and magnetism could act over distance in a complete vacuum if there wasn't something there, a medium, the ether as he called it. He says it would simply not be possible. Then the next statement he said, but let's talk about that ether just a little bit more because it's not just what you might think it is. He said, this ether may not be thought of so don't think of it as this, and doubt with the quality of ponderable media. In other words, it's not a substance you can touch and feel and flow and pour into a water pitcher. It's not a medium that cons is consisting of parts which may be tracked in time. So he says, don't think of it as a river of water flowing through space, as something you can touch and feel as something that you can track, that the ether is moving from point A to point B in a certain amount of time. He says, don't think of it that way. He says, the idea of motion may not be applied to it. So don't think of it as ether moving through space. Space has a quality. It allows electricity and magnetism to flow through it. It allows gravity to enact within it. 
it allows light to be affected by gravity even though mass, light doesn't have any mass but it's not a material, a substance that can be poured, that can be tracked, that can flow something we at this point do not yet understand this was the speech he made, Einstein, in 1920 so at some point he thought that he made a big mistake that it wasn't ether, or maybe something else, he didn't know but the concept here actually, in retrospect it's probably dead on and so we're going to explore this a little bit more in the videos to come what is ether well it's just a name but space has some sort of property some sort of quality that allows electricity magnetism to flow through it and that allows light to change direction under the influence of gravity even though light doesn't have mass so let's try to figure this out and this is kind of interesting so stay tuned and we'll have some other interesting material to present to you. So, historically, what is ether? Not, not applied to space. Historically, ether was the explanation why they began to see forces at a distance. They could not explain why there was the force of gravity, why the moon was attracted to the earth and made it go around in circles around the earth. We didn't know why the earth was attracted to the sun. We didn't know what caused these forces at a distance. And when Einstein then formulated the theory of general rel relativity, he saw the connection between the way gravity acted and the way space had to have properties. So they gave it a name. It's an ether. But trying to detect the ether, which is what Michelson and Morley tried to do, well, they failed miserably trying to do that. Although, I wouldn't call it a miserable failure. Coming up with a negative also showed that it was not able to be measured, but it still has to be there. So even after the failure of trying to figure out if ether was a moving fluid in space and you could then check your velocity against the velocity of the ether, that did not happen to be the correct way of looking at it. But they've been looking for the concept of ether for about 200 years already. Well, the definition is uh, a pleasant smelling, formless, volatile liquid that's highly flammable. Well, that's the ether of chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people generally know that as chemistry ether, not physics ether. Yes, but the ether in physics and in astronomy is, is simply referring to the qualities or properties of space. Yeah, it's definitely not associated with the ether that we have in chemistry. Matter of fact, I believe ether was actually used to kind of knock people out when they tried to do operations on them yeah, back in the old days. Know. Yeah, it didn't work very well. <laughs> Yes.